Hi! Welcome to a no IP video in our series of summer projects. Make the most of the summer by creating your very own media server that you can access remotely with ease. In this video, we'll show you a brief overview on how to turn your Raspberry Pi into a remote file server using Open Media Vault. With this setup, not only will you be able to store and access your files locally, we'll also show you how to configure NoIP's dynamic DNS service so you can access your server from anywhere. For detailed instructions, check out the guide in the comments. Let's get started. Before we begin, let's go over the equipment you'll need for this project. Firstly, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 4 with a micro SD card, you'll need a good power supply for it, and you'll need an external SSD with a USB to SATA cable. We also recommend using a hardwired Ethernet cable instead of the Raspberry Pi's built-in Wi-Fi. Here's what my finished file server looks like. As you can see, I went with a nice case with room for an SSD, and I added a heatsink to the Pi. These aren't mandatory, but it makes the finished product look more polished, and it's a bit easier to manage. We'll be using Raspbian Lite for this project. You can use a different operating system if you want, but you must use the Lite version. Open Media Vault will not install if you use a regular desktop version. You can see here I'm using Raspberry Pi Imager to download and flash the image to my SD card. Once you have a Lite operating system installed on your Pi, you can install Open Media Vault. Thankfully, it's as simple as running a simple command in your terminal. Now, this command might take a while, so I cut it off a bit. Remember to check out the description after the video for more detailed instructions on all of this. This is just an overview. But once this command is complete, you should be able to load Open Media Vault in your browser. Check it out. Neat, huh? After getting set up, I recommend going to the plugins page and checking out some of the plugins there to expand the functionality. The last thing you'll need to do is configure dynamic DNS. There are some great videos on this already, which I'll link in the video description. You will also need to forward port 80 so you can access the Raspberry Pi remotely. Thanks for watching. Happy streaming!